All right, so this video might be kind of interesting because a lot of people have asked about this, and it has to do with my lithium ion battery pack that I built quite some time ago. Uh, but a lot of people have concern that I'm only using a 3S pack. So the maximum voltage on that pack is about 12.6 volts, and the minimum voltage is about 9 volts. And a lot of people want to know or what I get asked about a lot anyway is, you know, is this going to cause a problem? Should I be boosting the voltage up so I'm getting the full capacity of the lithium packs? Uh, blah, 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 stuff like that. Uh, I just want to kind of show you my reasoning in uh, why I w went with a 3S pack. Now, first off, we get the calculator out here. Uh, the minimum voltage of a lithium ion battery is 3 volts. So we have three volts per cell, and we have three cells that are in series, so we're going to multiply that by three. Minimum voltage is nine. That's where that comes from. Now that is the absolute minimum voltage. No real reason to take it that far. That's just the absolute minimum. And also on the high side, 4.2 is the maximum per cell. And by cell, I mean the 18650s that I'm using. Uh, but anyway, you get three of those in series, your maximum voltage is 12.6. Now, interestingly enough, when it comes to lead-acid batteries, about 12.6 to 12.8, depending on who you ask, is considered a full charge. So, uh, interesting enough, the latest comment that I saw was somebody saying that the full charge voltage of a 12-volt lead-acid battery should be 13.5 volts, which... Maybe full charge while it's still hooked up to the charger is 12 point or 13.5 volts, but yeah, 13.5 volts for a lead acid, flooded lead acid battery. Anyway, it's just sitting there. That's kind of normal for like an AGM battery or an SLA one. Those tend to sit a little bit higher for whatever reason. Um, but anyway, a standard lead acid battery will sit maybe 12.8 volts at full charge. So yeah, 12.6 volts on the lithium is a little bit less. But what I wanted to point out is if you move up to a four cell uh, battery pack, so you have four cells and you have 4.2 volts per cell, now all of a sudden your battery pack's at 16.8 volts at a full charge, which is well above what any 12 volt inverter would be rated to run at above any, any, any 12 volt appliance basically is not gonna wanna run too well at 16.8 volts. And likewise, um, if you go four cells times your uh, three volts per cell again, the minimum voltage of that pack is now 12 volts, which is really high for a 12 volt system. So your cutout voltages are usually around 10 and a half for a lithium battery pack, or sorry, for a lead acid uh, 12 volt system. The cutout voltage of like a power inverter, let's say, is going to be something like uh, 10 volts. It's not going to be 12. So. 4S definitely just does not work at all across the board um, for this because it's too high to start with, so your inverter won't turn on for one thing, and it has a likelihood of damaging the capacitors in the inverter because a lot of times they're only 16 volt rated caps, and you are going above that 16.8 volts. And when you get down to the minimum side, well, you're going way too low because it's going to cut out 10 volts, you're going to cause damage to your batteries, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, that's the first main reason why I went to a 3S pack, because you get the voltage from 9 volts up to uh, up to 12.6. And 12.6 is basically a fully charged lead-acid battery. It's pretty darn close anyway. So a lot of people seem to think that lead-acid, when it's fully charged, should be like 13.5 volts or more. And no, it really shouldn't be, unless it's still hooked up to the charger, in which case it can be a little bit higher. But if you just let a flooded lead-acid car battery sit for a couple of days. It's gonna drift down to like 12.9, maybe 13. If it's a really good battery, it might sit at 13. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be 12.6 to 12.9, possibly 13 most of the time, from what I've seen anyway. So yeah, no real reason to have stuff run that high. Now the next thing is, let's say I have a power inverter, it's gonna cut out voltage of 10 and a half volts, which is kind of typical. Usually the power inverters, they'll start beeping and giving you a warning at 11 volts and they'll cut out 10 and a half, okay? We divide that by three volts per cell, so that is exactly three and a half volts per cell is what uh, you're running at 
for uh, for a typical cutout. So now obviously this is under load. That is the one caveat to this. But I want to look at this chart over here. Now this is cell voltage versus time actually, which is basically the capacity. If you look at this, three and a half volts right there. And after you get down below three and a half volts, your lithium battery pack voltage starts dropping very rapidly until it gets down below to your, uh, the red line there is the three volt line, which is your cutout of course. Uh, and then they actually took it below that even further. So really, you're not losing a whole lot of capacity by only bringing your cells down to three and a half volts per cell. And in fact, if you watch on a cell phone, uh, if you actually monitor the voltage, which you can do with an app, uh, instead of just battery percentage, uh, when you hit three and a half volts, that's about when the phone shuts off which is kind of interesting. So 1% or 0% according to the phone is only about three and a half volts because you could take it down to here. Um, of course that phone's gonna want a little bit of reserve capacity. Uh, let's find another one of these graphs that gives uh, capacity or something on it. Yeah, here we go, we got one with capacity here. Three and a half volts is right there and they're discharging. This is, yeah, I don't think we wanna, because this is a very high C rate discharge. Actually, let's look at this. Let's look at this because a 1C discharge on that big battery bank is um, like 18 or 19 amps, something like that. It's pretty high. But if we come over, unfortunately, this doesn't have lines. 3.5 volts is right about where that pointer is, something like that. Uh, anyway, uh, especially when you're looking at 1C, you're not losing any capacity there. You're losing like a quarter of an amp hour. And this is like 18C, I, will, I would never push my battery packs that hard. Let's find a different one. Capacity and percentage, I like this picture, but it's tiny. Can we, can we do something about that? Kinda. So half a C, let's look at the one C. Three and a half volts is this one, it'd be halfway between this line. So yeah, we're at about discharge capacity, which is the depth of discharge at 1C, which is a pretty respectable load for that uh, battery bank. You've used about 90% of the capacity in those cells at three and a half volts per cell. Um, so there's not really any reason to pull them down all the way to three volts, which is uh, actually right here. And actually, even then, at 3 volts, they're showing you've only used 95-ish mm, percent of the capacity. They're talking about bringing the batteries down to, like, nothing, apparently. All right, so anyhow, uh, looking at these different curves, they vary kind of wildly in terms of, the, like, this one here that says 2C. You're about a little over half the capacity, maybe is used there, that's still okay. Uh, it actually kind of rides that line for a while, so you can almost say it goes down to here, which would be a decent bit of the capacity. Uh, but yeah, the characteristics are gonna vary anyway. Uh, I tried to find a good 2C discharge line that kinda would look like what mine was. I should actually do this myself, make my own lithium uh, discharge graphs. That'd be kind of interesting, but uh, anyway. Uh, the next thing I want to show you, and the reason why I'm perfectly okay with only bringing the batteries down to 3.5 volts per cell, uh, other than what I just showed you, that it actually uses about 90% of the capacity in the battery anyway, uh, especially because I don't put that thing under too much of a load usually. I'm not running that inverter at the full 300 watts. I'm running it at like 150 watts, if that. Most of the time I'm more like running it at 30 watts. Uh, but this is the next chart that I want to show you. Uh, so the difference, uh, so this is depth of discharge versus the cycle, number of cycles. So if you're draining the batteries all the way down and then all the way back up every single time, you're only expected to get, oh, maybe 900 charge cycles. And really, even on this graph, if you're taking them down to 90% every time, which apparently you're getting kind of close to the 90% range at 3.5 volts per cell, it might not be saving you too much. 
So, yeah, a thousand times. But if you're only taking it down to a half, like some of these graphs, when you're at 2C, it says that 3.5 volts is about half charge. You can expect to get about 3,000 cycles. So you might not get as long as run times when you're doing when you're not bringing them all the way down to the 9 volts per cell. But the batteries themselves will actually last quite a lot longer in terms of service life. So anyway, this is kind of the logic that I used when I was designing this battery pack and coming up with what I wanted to do. Uh, the main reason why you would do a 3S pack is because the voltage range is the closest thing that you can get with standard lithium ion or lithium polymer uh, batteries. So this is the thoughts that were going through my head as I was designing this lithium battery pack and I chose that I wanted a 3S system. The, the biggest thing is the voltages are the closest that you can get to a 12 volt system. 9 volts to 12.6 is the closest that you can get on a standard lithium ion or lithium polymer battery pack. Uh, because once you go up to 4S, it goes ridiculously out of proportion because you're at 12 volts at a minimum and you're going all the way up to 16.8, which is way too high for any 12 volt appliance. So running it on the low side is okay and 12.6 down to 9 volts. That's all right. And it doesn't really, your batteries will actually last longer because you're not actually taking them all the way down to 9 volts. If you only take them down to the 3.5 volts per cell, which as you saw, is still pretty darn dead, especially if it's 3.5 cell or 3.5 volts per cell open circuit, which the way that I use this battery pack, it pretty much is going to be an open circuit because I'm only usually I'm only pulling maybe 60 watts at the most through the inverter. Usually I'm running a soldering iron or a glue gun, hot glue gun, that those two combined would only take 35 watts. Or I'll run fluorescent in a power outage. I've used it before to run the wireless router, fluorescent light bulb, charge some phones. You know, that stuff doesn't total to more than 50 watts. It'll last for a long time off of that. And as I mentioned, uh, cell phones, they don't pull their lithium batteries down below 3.5 volts anyway. So that's going to tell you something, that that 3.5 volts is pretty much completely dead anyway. Also, another thing I should note for this is that the inverter that I have Velcroed to the top of that battery pack is actually, oh, it's not meant for lithium, but it cuts out at 9.6 volts, and the warning is at 10.5 volts. So it's a little bit different. Most 12 volt inverters with a warning beeper starts going off at about 11 volts and it cuts out at 10 and a half. That inverter, the beeper starts going off at 10, 10 and a half and it cuts out at like 9.6, 9 and a half, something like that. It's actually quite low for a 12 volt system, but it works good for lithium. Uh, and like I said, once you get down below three and a half volts per cell, it's really not that much capacity left unless you're pulling like a really high load off of the cells, which not good for them anyway like the cells that i have somebody actually commented on one of the videos that the cells that i was charging in that lithium pack were lithium iron cobalt or something some cobalt mix and they would be rated for 2c of discharge which would be about 36 amps uh, and they do hold 30 amps without too much of an issue uh, without they get a little bit warm actually at that time or at that current uh, but like I said, I don't do that very often. I hardly ever run anything over 100 watts off that thing. And it served me quite well, actually. It's still going pretty strong. Of course, I did just rebuild the thing. Anyway, this is my thoughts on using a 3S lithium ion battery pack for uh, a 12-volt lead acid replacement. It does actually work quite well. I've been using it. It does a great job. So, anyhow... That's about it for now, guys. Bye.